morning, Tux. Oh, big stretch. Good morning, everyone. We had a nice steady rain overnight. The ground is wet. The air is cool and clean, smelling and feeling. I probably won't need to water today. And uh, so far, so good today. I don't see Morris this morning. This is the other orange cat. Johnny calls him Marty. He was meowing and meowing and meowing. I really don't still know if it's a he. Um, since he intimidates Stripe and Morris, I put some food over there for him. I haven't seen uh, Morris this morning, but Stripe is here and in his normal good mood and not holding yesterday's vet visit against me. That's good, good news. Well, I'm very color coordinated today. <laughs> I got my socks on that match the pollen on my shoes. Okay, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> yeah, we got yellow tinted shoes and yellow socks. Mostly it's got on the new Star Wars shirt I bought. Oh, yeah, These are the droids we've been looking for and it's got C-3PO and R2-D2 on the wanted pictures. Very cool. So the seven day says it's going to be 70s and 50s with an occasional 40 at night, 40 something. So that's all good. Okay, you say so. I'm looking forward to lots of 70 degree days. I don't want 80s. I told JB he could keep those 80 degree days down there. In Florida. In Florida. I didn't want any more 80s. He can have them all. <laughs> I understand. Well, my clematis vine actually looks quite happy over here. I can't wait to see it open up a bit more. And there's, I see at least four or five, six more blooms behind those four that are opening. You coming, Tux? Let's go. Let's go, bud. <sighs> I guess I should be happy his hygiene is good. Sometimes stopping on the walk to take care of, you know, grooming is not desirable. Hey. Hey, pretty girl. So this azalea has a fragrance. It smells really nice. I noticed just a bit of deer damage over here. Chewing. It's a good thing it, they didn't chew right where my flowers are. It's hard to have nice things with deer. Well, you guys are late to the walk this morning. But thank you for coming to greet me. I pulled weeds along the edge of the driveway there up to here. And you can kind of see it. They come out in pretty big clumps. You got to be careful not to remove the new, newly made topsoil. That's enough for one morning. A little bit at a time. We're supposed to have a nice week. Each morning I should be able to do a bit. 15, 20 foot section, something like that. Come on, Slate, let's go. I build robots. What's your superpower? So, um, in September of 2013, um, Lego Mindstorms introduced the EV3, or set 31313. And Johnny ended up getting one of those for Christmas that year, December 2013, and we had a really good time with it. Um, but come around school the next year in the fall of um, 2014, Johnny would have been in the fourth grade then, um, I approached the elementary school and said, hey, let's have one of these first Lego League or FLL robotics clubs. And oh, by the way, I'm willing to um, be the coach and come in and do all the work, the heavy lifting part at least. And... Um, can I do that? And I got support from the I took PTSA a PSA and the sixth and the principal grade and, and Johnny and everyone else I needed a different school, school moved and into middle school we embarked and that's on a robotics club and um, disbanded journey right when we arrived uh, learning was, about the Mindstorms robot and the Lego software and um I don't remember what the challenge was called that year but playing the game and all of that good stuff and it evolved 
I did it again in the fifth grade, took a break in the sixth grade. Actually, my fifth graders went to the state, state championship. So my second year, I took a team to state. We didn't advance to um, world, but still, that was pretty exciting. Uh, Johnny went into the sixth grade, and he moved schools. And the program at that school, it disbanded right when we got there. And, of course, I offered to run it, maybe scale it down, because I think they had, like, four or more teams. And I was prepared to do one or two, but not maybe four. And uh, so I offered to do it, and it just they let it die and that was kind of sad but thankfully um, for the seventh grade Johnny moved up to Wake Young Men's Leadership Academy to finish out middle school and then start high school and they did not have a current robotics program and they were super interested in having one so again I approached the principal and the PTSA and the math teachers and said let's do this and um, I had uh, support and we got started and so I'm currently in my fourth year so seventh eighth ninth and tenth grade for Johnny but my fourth year over there um, doing uh, coaching the robotics club so all that time we've been using that Lego Mindstorms EV3 kit 31313 plus the educational components um, the extensions, the add-on pieces, the rechargeable battery. We've been using it all that time, and those robots have held up great. I mean, they, I, we've used them at Sumo Bots where they literally smash into each other. And um, I have one robot that's lost the ability to make sounds, which has not really held us up too much in using it. And um, all the rest of them are running great. Now, they're all not original robots, right? I tried to add one or more a year when I could. Those robots are expensive. Um, I had some um, help from parents uh, making donations to equipment kind of under the table. Like, here, go buy what you need for the club. We want to support you, that kind of thing. And so... Um, I, I like to try to have one one robot for two boys or two students would be the best. Uh, one for three can work. After that, it's really hard to find enough um, stuff to keep everyone busy and happy and engaged and learning and sharing well. So um, usually a team for FLL would be 10 students. So if I had five robots for 10 students, that would be like, fantastic but of course five robots could be 15 students and at WYMLA Johnny School we've done two teams a year so we've allowed up to 20 but I think by the time we went to competition we had really had like six or seven interested boys per team so I did my best to share the work but um, in 2019 Lego FLL Lego uh, the store uh, introduced a robot called Spike Prime and that was from their education branch because Lego and Lego Education are really kind of two separate companies and it was a brand new brick and it was kind of it looked like it was sort of for elementary school kids which Lego FLL starts in the fourth grade and goes up through about eighth grade so there are elementary school kids there but it I don't know it just it didn't have that really powerful look to it. Um, I didn't have the money to go buy it. We were all invested in the equipment we had. Lego said we could keep on using what we had. And so I didn't want to throw that in the mix. But um, Lego has come out now. And this was in the fall of 2020. So a year after Spike Prime. With the Lego Robot Inventor uh, Kit 51515. And it is... Essentially, it's the same brick that Spike Prime used, um, but it's uh, geared a little bit more, I would say, toward, um, well, first the retail space and more as a Lego Mindstorms EV3 replacement. Um, so they have announced that they're discontinuing the EV3, although I, at least as a you go buy the whole original retail kit. Although, you know, there's a huge EV3 trade of new parts and used parts on eBay. And I even think the Lego uh, store still has like the EV3 brick and some st uh, such stuff like that. 
So, um, I think it'll be around for a long time to come. I think, um, you know, Lego FLL, they allowed NXT, the, the robot prior to EB3, to be used in competition, even including this last year. So, I expect the old robots will be in competition for some time to come. But, um, we have a new robot now. And I am super excited that um don gave me the go ahead to go ahead and get one because you know the robot lady has to have the new equipment i'm not sure exactly how we're going to fit it into robotics which i do plan to do again in the fall um minus my son now who's aged out um and moved on to other things but um with the interested kids that are at the school so, um, you know, probably mostly 6th, 7th, and some 8th graders, a 9th grader if they're interested in coming and haven't aged out, um, or if they're interested in helping, volunteering. So, I guess without further ado, it's time to open up this, um, this box that came in the mail yesterday that had the big old battery symbol on it. So, um, we'll get into, uh, A, how cool this new robot is, and B, some of the differences between the EV3 and, um, the robot inventor, or I'm going to call it the old robot and the new robot, but just know that there's a lot of other versions of robot in between. Um, so it looks like one piece of tape. The box is in great shape. Um, so I'm not worried about anything going on there. I did order it from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Um, and that was sort of so that I could get it here, um, really quick. Quicker than I felt Lego could get it to me. Because once I decided I needed to have it, I needed to have it. And, you know, Amazon points, Lego points, points are good. Either point would work. Um, so here it is. Here it is. It's a similar, um size box to uh the one that the eb3 robot came in maybe just a little bit smaller form factor because everything about the new robot inventor the new robot is smaller number one everything is smaller so uh i'm sure there's a few pieces of tape here and my kitties on the floor they're very interested in checking out the cardboard box because they feel like they've gotten a present too all right so let's cut the tape. Make this mine. Lego does stand behind all of their stuff. If parts are ever missing or things malfunction, um, you're not going to have any problem with Lego. They have a phone number to call to make things right, and that's just never a concern. They charge for their stuff, and their stuff is well put together. Lift off the lid. Now the original... The old robot box, the box was, um, it, it had some cardboard in it. It had a sleeve on it and it opened up so you could do things. This looks like it's sort of meant to be uh, a sorting compartment, although without any real dividers, I don't know that I think that that would be particularly useful. I want to put this in a safe spot. I don't need the box anymore for now. Safe spot. All right, so um, I see um, excitement and um, a ton of cool stuff and new part colors and um, hours of joy and uh, a challenge. And I'm sure some people would be like, oh, wow, what is that? <laughs> um, I'll see a lot of familiar things, uh, a lot of familiar stuff. So uh, these teal, this teal color is kind of... I mean, maybe Lego used it for something else, but to, in my impression is, is uh, there are no teal parts in the old robot inventory, and these parts are new for the robot inventor here. It comes with pins. Um, there are, there's a new uh, gear differential in this robot, which is, uh, you know, an, an in-depth topic, but I know to look for that in here. There are, um, I believe there's, I want to say yeah there's four motors and this this is the ultrasonic sensor and it comes with a lego version of a breadboard a ball for doing um games for teaching yourself stuff a lot of robot bearing parts to dress up the robot and make him look cool 
This is one color sensor. You know, a lot of times when we do sumo bots, we need two per robot. Uh, the old set came with just one. This is your recharging cable, uh, lots more pins and um, bearing parts and brackets and pins. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's say the box says there are um, 949 pieces. To put that in perspective, some of the modular buildings I've been building lately have over 3,000 pieces. However, um, you know, there are a lot of decorative pieces associated with the, um, with the modular buildings, whereas uh, just the fairing parts are kind of body armor for the robot. Think SpaceX and rocket components. The fairing parts are, dec are sort of decorative, but they also keep, um, you know, kind of distinguish the internal guts of the robot versus the external parts. Um, I just want to say for adults watching out there that you're never too old to have a Lego robot, whether you have kids or grandkids to justify it or not. And as you'll see as we do some stuff with this, you don't have to be an expert programmer. Lego gives you some code uh, to make things work. And, um, you know, you can certainly learn along the way, but uh, you, don't, you don't have to be too, too expert. So, so the very first thing you're going to notice about what comes out of the retail Lego Mindstorms Inventor 51515 is that it comes with a lithium ion rechargeable battery, thus the battery symbol on the box. Now the original retail version took six AA batteries and you know if you're just looking at the LCD screen and dropping programs onto the brick and maybe reading the color sensor that doesn't use a lot of battery. But if you're practicing turns and spinning and traversing across the table, those large servo motors uh, would eat those batteries up really quick. And on top of that, you don't get a very consistent battery um, output. So your motors might not move, uh, you know, a, a 50 setting might not move the same when the battery is really full or the battery versus the battery sort of moving toward empty. So. Um, we would end up having to buy the education version, which came with a rechargeable battery and or um, uh, source it from Lego or on eBay. And those batteries were like $100. So the fact that Lego has put this in the box and it's part of the retail version and for the same price as the old robot version, that's a big deal in my, my humble opinion. And hopefully this battery's got a little bit of juice. Let's find out. She's got a pot for this. Exactly. It definitely is a bigger box than I thought. It's not heavy. But no, it's well, it's, but it's not light either. No, it's not trivial. Definitely so a six inch pot would be. Well, here. we will do an unboxing of that in the minutes. I guess it's the day for unboxings. Yes, that's right. I, I've worked so long out here that the, the battery running that ring light is off. <laughs> I've been going for four hours yeah, now, been, something been, like that. Yep. And my other Lego parts came, Monster Mansion Lego parts, so that's good. Yeah. And uh, the the mail lady, she tipped us off. She, Something's going on down know, at the, the mailbox, mail. so she, I'm going to send Dawn. <laughs> so let me go see what's going on at the mailbox. So we're going to go check this out. The um, mail lady said she couldn't touch the box because she's not, you know, she didn't deliver it. But she let us know there is a box up at our mailbox. She said it's a really big box, so we'll see. Oh, huh? it is a fair size box. Yeah, yeah, that looks like a kitten box. 
<laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I can see. I wonder if it's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy enough. I'm gonna go get the GMC. All right, I'm not gonna plan it right this minute. I am gonna plan it tonight, but before Don goes back to his office, because he's got at least an hour more to go today, I thought I'd really like to see what's inside, and it's sort of a two person job to open it and film it, so. I knew that it was gonna have packing. I don't see dirt all over the inside of the box. So let me see. Well, your arm went all the way in there. All right, so it's basically this long cardboard thing inside of that. Okay. Do we dare lift it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna probably show it from the other end. Okay. We want to do whatever the right thing is, but I'm not sure we have exact packing instruction or unboxing instructions here. Not my appeal. Never mail ordered a plant before. Oh, I have, but been not many. It's usually a disappointment. I would say these people know what they're doing. These people act. I bought from them direct, but they sell on Amazon. I just figured if I didn't buy it on Amazon, they wouldn't have to pay Amazon a cut. And it was free shipping and the same price either way. So. You should probably open it outside because it's got dirt. Okay, out. so I should walk out the door. All right. Well, that's the right size pot. He didn't mean for you to get scared. I gotta go get the, the cutter. Wow, you're gonna be impressed. So their intent was this thing not get damaged. Oh, wow. I'm going to say you're going to be very impressed. Oh, wow. I am impressed. It's so put the a size. Rod yep. to keep it from sliding up and down inside the box, box. and getting crushed. Well, I expect if they mail order plants, they know what they're doing as far as protecting them. And they even tied the little branches. And the... I'm impressed. It's got even got one of those little red balloons. It sure does. It. Can confirm it's the right tree. Yeah, I agree. I'm thinking you're going to be a happy girl. Way cool. Super cool. Yep, yeah, it's going in this pot, which is, you know, I would stick it in there right this minute, but the pot's just a little low on dirt. Just a little low. I need a little dirt. I'm testing the theory that holding the button down will turn it back off. Okay, good. I'm impressed, very. I've got to say, I am impressed. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's, it's uh, looking really good. Yeah, we went ahead and planted it because um, I gotta go run an errand here in a bit and I'll be, I'll be out of the house so Don yeah, can make I'll up go. the time he's losing now then. And this is kind of our after work thing um yeah. yeah i'm super impressed i mean really i'll put the um link to the little tree uh the the nursery obviously if you're looking to have some sort of special tree sent to you i, I picked this place for us because it was in south carolina there was another really nice one in oregon but i didn't want my tree to come across country in a box yeah. and i have to say the post office brought in the delivery date by a whole day yeah i uh pushed the i we didn't pull the sticks out the stick was in the pot, had been stuck in the pot by when they shipped it. So all I did is push it all the way through to basically the bottom of the pot. Right, and so that'll keep that it from getting blown around in the wind until the until it roots into the pot good. We won't leave that on forever, but a little bit of protection here in a summer thunderstorm might go a long way till it grows just a bit. Right. All watered, and I should really be able to keep up with it easily there. My girls are hanging. It's a little breezy. It feels so good out here. We've taken a hi Tux. I'll be back in a little bit. We've taken um you know a really nice step back to spring.
from those summer feeling days and I am super excited about it. Thank you, Ruby. Ruby has a software update. 21.4.15. Well, we'll do that when we get home. Well, I'm headed back in from running errands and playing Pokemon Go. It's 68 out there. The temperature is just fantastic. These are perfect spring days here. Johnny was commenting um, how grateful he was that the pollen was not bad like it was anymore. You know, when he goes up the hill to see the cats, it's not, you can breathe. You're not getting dusted while you're outside. Um, so yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick off the software update. I've got 198 miles of range and basically charged up just a little trip around town. So I'm gonna say install now. And um, Johnny's got Taekwondo, so um, I'm not pulling into the garage yet. He's headed up the hill to look for Morris. We actually didn't see Morris today after our really good luck yesterday. I don't think anything's wrong, although I really need to call and ask if I can go pick up the drop trap for the other orange cat who's sort of intimidating our, our guys up the hill, our other guys. <laughs> 